In this video, we're going to build an auditory oddball experiment using emotive marking components in Psychopi version 2023.2.3. Before we can connect to Psychopi, we need to create an app ID. Go to emotive website and under my account, select Cortex apps. Here, you can give your app any name and register it. You'll receive a client ID and a client secret. Open up any text editor like Notepad and enter the details here. Save the file as .emotivecreds. Remember to select all files so that the file is not saved as a text file. And save this in your home directory. Depending on if you're using a Windows or a Mac, your home directory might be different. Now let's add the emotive plugin to Psychopi. When you first open Psychopi, you'll find that you don't have any of the emotive components under the EEG section. Go to Tools, select the Plugins Package Manager. Once the plugin is finished installing, you might need to restart Psychopi in order for the emotive components to appear. Here, you'll see two new components added. The first is the emotive recording component. This allows Psychopi to connect to the headset and start recording. The second is the emotive marking component. This allows you to accurately mark events when they happen. Now we're ready to build the experiment. First, let's add the emotive recording component, accepting the defaults. Next, let's add an instruction. We can say, listen to the tones and count the high tones. We'll add a keyboard routine so the participant can progress to the next stage. Now we'll build a stimuli routine. For this experiment, we're going to build a stimuli using a custom coding component. At the beginning of the experiment, we can import the packages we're going to use. We can also set a random seed. So that our experiment is replicable. In the begin routine tab, let's define a random variable. And we'll use this random variable to deliver a high tone every 20% of the time with a marker value of two. And all other times that's 80% of the time will deliver a tone that's a low tone. The marker value of one. We also want to define an intertrial interval. We'll call that dollar delay. And we'll allow that to vary between one and two seconds. Now let's add the sound component. 
here we'll add the dollar delay time and expected start of one. And we want our tone to be a duration of 50 milliseconds. So change that to 0 0.05. And the sound that we want to play on every trial is the dollar tone variable defined by the coding component. Next, let's add an emotive marking component. So here we'll add the dollar delay value so that we can send a marker the exact same time that a tone was heard. We can leave this duration as one. And here we want the label to be the same dollar tone variable and the value, the dollar value variable, which we defined in the coding component. This will only deliver one tone. So we want to add a loop so that we can deliver more than one tone. We can change this up to 300. The more trials, the better. I'll leave it 10 for now, just for practice. Now we're ready to test our experiment. It's a good idea to first test your experiment by disabling the emotive components because it won't run unless you have the emotive headset connected. Before recording your data, it's a good idea to connect your headset to the Emotive Pro and have a look at the raw signal. You want to make sure there's no unusual noise in the data and you can use the Emotive EG quality indicator to help you out. So you can see here the two channels, T7 and T8 on the M8 headset I'm wearing are providing a good signal. We should also check the data packets tab to make sure we see this nice saw through pattern and that you don't see large red vertical lines that indicate data packet loss. If you do see them, you need to make sure you move away from any devices that may be causing noise. Once you've checked your data, you can keep the Emory Pro running, but you and also just close it and make sure you're connected only to your emotive launcher. Now we're ready to run the experiment. Let's enable our components again. And let's click run. The first time you try to run the experiment, it will fail. That's because you have to go into your launcher and approve it to connect the first time. You won't need to do this again for the next experiments. Now you can run the experiment. Once the experiment is done, you will be able to see your recording in your Emotive Pro like this. You will need an appropriate license. You can see here below that we can see that there are markers and 10 of them added into our stream. You can send your data to analyze using our Emotive Pro Analyzer ERP pipeline. Or you can export the data. You'll see three files exported. The first is a .csv file, which contains the raw EEG data with timestamps. The next is a .json file, which contains some metadata. And finally, the interval marker file, where you'll find details of your markers with the duration and time. If we open up the raw EEG file, we'll find a marker value column. If we just sort that, we'll see the marker values here. So that 
you'll see the low tones and the high tones sorted. We can also open up the interval marker file and we'll see that the latency from the starting of the experiment and the label as well as the value that we added during the experiment so that we can identify what tone played during each time. You can find some of our sample experiments on the image of GitHub page. You might find that some of the experiments are built with older versions of PsychoPy. You might need to replace the marking and recording components in the newer versions. That's the end of our tutorial. We hope you enjoyed it. Good luck building your experiment.